Last March, I bought a 3,600 square foot building. It was a church. My goal and my vision was to transform it into a shop with a small retail space and an outdoor venue for an artisan market. I've spent the last eight months, eight hard months, transforming this property into what it is now. It's not 100% complete. It probably never will be. It'll always be an evolution. But I've arrived at a place now where I'm ready to share with you what I've ended up with, what I've still yet to do, and where I hope to take this property and this shop in the coming months and years. Let's get started. For those of you who have known me for a long time, when you see the building now, you'll be able to see that I've tried to make it uniquely me. This is what the building looked like before, and with the snap of a finger, this is what it looks like now. There used to be windows that wrapped all the way around the building. I pulled all those out, reframed it, and replaced it with a rustic tongue and groove planking. Looks really good. If you remember, the door used to be on the side, so the door is now relocated to the front. Built a little awning there, it looks pretty cool. Come on in, I'll show you the inside. This is the retail area, and for orientation, I just came in the front door right here. So you're standing in the corner of the building looking diagonally. And like I said, the, the front door used to be right here to my right. I pulled all that out, but I did put a couple windows in to give some natural light. Now this area is by design a little bit dim because I wanted the, the shopping area to have kind of a mojo to it, kind of an ambiance. So I installed fixtures that would achieve that. In fact, this fixture in the middle, I actually made it. It looks, looks pretty cool. Now, uh, this used to be the lobby of the church and it looked like the lobby of a church. So in this transformation, I went a little crazy with the tongue and groove, but I just really like it. And like I said, it's uniquely me. And, and it also smells good in here too, so I like that. Now if you remember, uh, this wall used to be completely closed up and there was a classroom adjacent. So I opened up that wall during the renovation and expanded the retail area into that classroom. The ceiling, um, I had spray foam put all the way around in here. So this whole area is encapsulated with spray foam and I used old barn tin on the ceiling and that looks good. How am I gonna use this space? Well, I'm still figuring this out. Like I said, this is an evolution, but eventually this will be a place uh, where not only the doodads that I make exist, but hopefully it'll be things that other people in the community and outside of the community also have a venue to sell their stuff. I've also partnered with Nathan from Out of the Woods Forestry. I'll be selling his lumber here, obviously his slabs, but now Nathan has the capability to do S4S lumber and even flooring. So that'll be a good addition and hopefully another side of business for this shop. This door behind me right here goes back into an area where there's another classroom an office and the restrooms. And this door goes back into the shop and I hope that's where all the magic is made. So let's go take a look. This shop used to be the sanctuary of the church and through the renovation, it involved removing a stage they had in here, taking up flooring, and it was incredibly dim in here. So I had to replace all the lighting with these really awesome American green lights. When I changed the facade, I still kept some windows in the shop. So I have some natural light and I like that. I like to be able to look out and see cars drive by and see who's pulling in the driveway. Um, it's literally been in the last couple of weeks that I've got everything moved up here and got power to it. So I'm just getting started. Let me change the camera around so you can see the rest of the shop. When I look around, I wonder how in the world did I have all this stuff in my little 900 square foot shop? And now I have room to spread out, to move around, to breathe, to do the kinds of projects that I like to do. Now this isn't a production shop, that's not what I aspire to be, but it is a space that will allow me to do the custom unique kinds of projects and signage that I like to do so much, but always struggle with before because of space. 
Another part of my mission is to be able to help other people, and there's a few ways I can do that. One is through the retail space to give people the opportunity to have a place to sell their stuff. The other is the outdoor artisan market. Now this isn't a maker space, but I do have a lot of space, I've got a lot of equipment, and a little bit of knowledge. And as I identify local artisans who are struggling with any of the above, I want to be able to help them in this space. Everybody wins. The recipient benefits, and I benefit too because it makes me feel good, and I also learn and get better at what I do. There's a number of things that I'm still going to have to do to get this place optimal and functional in the way that I want it. But for now, I've got most everything up here. I still got to get, still got to get the big jointer up here. But after that, everything's here. But there are a number of things. For example, like lumber storage, I'm going to have to figure that out. What's that going to be? And other things like I'd like to have a permanent built-in. Uh, chop station, miter station. See, everything I had before, well, it's all on wheels because in the old shop, I'd have to pull it out, set it up, use it, put it away, pull something else out. Now I can build in some permanency into this shop. The other thing I want to do is back in the corner, that's going to be my little metal area back there. I don't do a whole lot of metal work, uh, but of course with signage, I use the plasma CNC, which still got to get it up and going. So I use the plasma cutter and I do a little bit of welding and a whole lot of grinding. So I want to make a nice little functional workspace for that in the back. Over the course of the summer, I was incredibly fortunate that the inventor of track tubes, Glenn, allowed me to become his business partner and invest in the track tubes company. In August, we had 2,600 pounds of these extrusions made. And over the course of Black Friday, we sold the last one. Believe me, I'll be talking more about track tubes as time moves on, particularly as track tubes transitions to fall completely under my business here. But in the meantime, there are more track tubes coming in January and Glenn continues to invent really unique and innovative products to be used with track tubes. I don't wanna to leave today without expressing my tremendous gratitude to everyone who's helped me with this project. I've had so many people encourage me. I've had people come from long distances to help me with the work. I've had local people who've come by and lent a hand. I've had people who've supported this financially through my fundraiser. I just don't know what to say, and I know that saying thank you isn't sufficient, but I'll never forget what's been given to me to help me have a, a fighting chance at having this dream. I'm gonna take the next two or three weeks to get through the holidays and this curse called 2020 and use that time to get myself well grounded. But I'm ready to get started again in 2021, started again with the work, the projects, and the content. What's the content gonna be moving forward? I don't know, I'm still figuring it out. It's gonna be less vlog and more projects, I think. I wanna do live streams with people like Nathan from Out of the Woods Forestry and other local artisans so we can talk about the things we're working on and how we're doing it. And as far as my content goes, I wanna do more build projects but I don't want to do it like everybody else is trying to show it. I want to show you what I'm working on, how I'm doing it, what I'm making, and incorporate that into the story that has become the Bristol Artisan Company. Thanks for watching.